Mm, hello, YouTube. This is Spooty Man coming back at you with a brand new game. Brand new to me, not to the world, and I'm loving it. And it is called Kerbal Space Program. That's right. Kerbal Space Program. All right, enough of that. Sorry. All right, so it's a sandbox game. It is amazing. Hours and hours and hours of fun. And that's just for like building the ship, getting it into space, orbiting planets, interplanetary missions, refueling missions, uh, probes, rovers, everything. This game has everything if you like space and you just want to build and go to space and feel the accomplishment that uh, I guess NASA feels every day. Uh, uh, go ahead and buy Kerbal Space Program. It's real cheap. It's only 20 bucks, 23 bucks. You can get it on Steam. Steam has it. It's great. Uh, it, they've got Dev Talks every, uh, I think, Dev Dev Fridays or Dev Mondays. They have streams going all the time on Twitch. Hit them up on Twitch. It's Kerbal uh, Space Program, KSP. I don't know. Just uh, you know, search on Twitch. You'll find their channel. Uh, they're always doing uh, dev feeds and, and fun feeds, you know, just to have fun. Uh, but anyway, going to the point of why I brought you here today is the self-writing rover system that I've built. Let's get right into it. Now, I've sent a couple rovers to a couple planets, and they flip, they crash, they break, and uh, it's really, really annoying. I had plans for a moon base. Uh, moon base. Alpha Sputari, as you can see. I, uh, not great things. Uh, but anyway, so I built a few rovers. I sent them out there. They all flipped. They all crashed. It really upset me a lot. So I went out and decided to build a rover that maybe if it flipped, it, it could ride itself. And maybe if the wheels popped, I could fix them. You know, you send a rover out, usually it's it's with these pro bodies, and these are all, these all create an unmanned vehicle. Now, you can add a, a, a lander can or a command pod or a cockpit to an unmanned vehicle, but it will not put a Kerbal in it when you send it up in the space. So let me uh, just load my ship here. The uh, SRR, the self-riding rover, I was going to call it the... SRSR, the self-riding super rover, but uh, that's just that's just being vain. I'm not that great of a builder. I don't think it's a super rover. So, um, and now I just got this game like uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I know nothing of efficiency. The word efficiency does not come up into my vocabulary when I'm building a rocket. This is 13 mainsail rockets. We've got six solid rocket boosters. We have, uh, I think these are LBT or LBT 45s. Yes, yes, maybe. And uh, yeah, it's a beast. I uh, had about 15 failed launches before I put in this uh, system here of girders with pretty much the spaghetti brackets going everywhere. I, I, those of you who already play this game or are way better at it than me probably have better ways of doing this. I couldn't get this section to stabilize so I stuck these girders in which is part of I think this might be new in 1.9 or 0.19. I, I'm, I'm brand new to the game. I, I just started on 0.19 so 0.19 version is the game to me so I, I uh, just use what I get. So let me introduce you to Sir, it's my self-riding rover system. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, go across the vehicle here. This is the front. We got some headlights. Got some ground illuminating lights. Some RCS ports. This is a docking port. For once you get this bad boy into space, you can uh, set it into orbit and send up an interplanetary rocket system. It will push it on its way to wherever you want it to go. Uh, this is for aerodynamic purposes. Once you're in space, you can jettison that cap, and it just has the RCS can and the riding system. Uh, the self-riding system is a little hard to explain. Of course, it uses rover struts or landing struts like everybody else's self-riding system, but it's kind of unique because I've got landing wheels. 
I've got basically a four square of wheels uh, that will catch me in any kind of flop or damage that I'll do. It's reinforced with uh, steel girders. If you can see them right here in the corners of the of the pad, they go up. And uh, I've attached the landing struts to that and the wheels to that. So it's really kind of a fun system. I've got batteries and all kinds of planetary science equipment here. And then I got my little Kerbal Cabin. Got my lander can here in the middle. It's 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 currently uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's currently unmanned. You the the bad thing about the system is you have to launch it into space and then launch a Kerbal out after it. And and basically jettison the Kerbal uh, RCS your way into the uh, into the little lander can and then you know end your mission there it gets rid of the ship that you brought the Kerbal up in and then you're left with this awesome Kerbal but you know if you wanted to send this to a planet without all that mess you can and uh, that brings me to my next point if you guys wanted to send me a YouTube message with your email and I will send you the ship I have no problem sending you my ship I hope that uh, any of you who want it will take it and possibly redesign it or repurpose it or send my rover to planets that I have yet to manage to make it to. I had to tell you the truth, having the game for only a week and a half to two weeks, I have only made it to the moon and uh, I've only docked a spaceship once. I have a space station in extremely low orbit over the moon, but you know, that's we'll save that for a later episode. So I'm going to get right into launching it here, show you that I have a stable platform and port launch and you can here on Kerbin I'll show you the uh, the abort procedures do 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 all right here we are it's a beautiful morning on the planet Kerbin. Got the uh, launch facility prepped and ready to go. Everything is in place. Our beautiful system is ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it about 1,000 feet up, turn over so I don't land back onto the pad. Maybe we'll land somewhere over here. And uh, then we will abort launch. And uh, I will catch back up with you once you have aborted. And we will uh, show the functionality of this awesome rover. Here we go. good separation now it's interesting uh, I didn't mean for this in development okay we'll wait for the crash now I didn't initially mean for this Uh, but it lands on its uh, it lands on its uh, back basically. Uh, I've got these awesome oh, let's see the brakes here. Got these awesome uh, landing wheel balloon cushions, I guess you could call them. I, I don't know what you'd call them, but uh, we'll go ahead and speed up our descent here. 
falling at a beautiful 4.7 meters per second. Does not pop the tires when you land. I, I have not tested it at higher speeds, though I think maybe on a planet with more gravity, you would probably want about six or seven more parachutes. All right, so here we are landed. And conveniently for the video, we are upside down. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I'll first show you the correcting struts before I actually start flipping it. Uh, so these struts will actually come out once it is self-righted to right itself. So I've got those on the side. As you can see, they interface quite nicely with the wheels. They pop right back in. Everything's great. And then this one right here is my the one that flops me on my side. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and extend that one. Flop this baby on its side. Now these are extended just to prevent wheel poppage. If you do flip this without extending these first, uh, these wheels will pop. So now we will flip ourselves and we now have a stable rover system if you want to lock it into place. Uh, it won't slide down a hill or anything like that so it's got a kind of a nice braking system. Uh, I was kind of inspired by the, uh, I don't know if you guys watch Storm Chasers, but they've kind of got a system like this that locks their vehicles into the ground. Um, so let's pull them up and rove away. Detach the locking system and uh, or the flipping system and we're good to rove. Take off the brakes and we're off. A little bit of garbage there, no big deal. Roll right over it. I actually really like this design. Super fun. It gets going really fast. At the moon I had it up to about 40 before it flipped into a barrel roll that lasted about a minute and a half. <laughs> It just kept going and going and going. Uh, but when I landed, I had every single one of my tires was popped. Fortunately, I had a Kerbal with me. The Kerbal could uh, having some steering issues here. Let's see if. Okay, that's weird. The uh, wheels weren't spinning at first when I first landed. They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't turn, but they're turning now. I guess you should probably do a full systems check before you just rove off into the, <laughs> into the oblivion. Okay, so I'm gonna take off the brakes here. I'm gonna actually try and get it to do a flip for you, and uh, we'll see if uh, I can't demonstrate the self-riding system. In action. It's funny, it's actually a really stable rover, but eventually it will flip, and it's much easier on lower gravity systems. All right, as you can see, we have a flip and we have tire breakage. Now, at this point, I would recommend setting the brakes and jettisoning your Kerbal that uh, doesn't exist right now because there's not enough crew, there's no crew. But at this point, jump your Kerbal out and replace the tires if you want the authenticity of it. Now, I can tell you from testing that the Kerbal can repair these tires on the top when he's on the ground. So I just like to pop them out just to make it look like he's walking around and actually doing something. So we're going to pretend that our Kerbal has gotten out. He has repaired our tires. Boop, 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 and they are all fixed. And now let's rewrite ourselves. Now I like to do it kind of fast here. So, uh, oh, see? Now there I showed you what happens if you don't have the uh, uh, these landing struts jettisoned before you do the flip. You will pop your tires. But that's the cool part about having the Kerbal with you. He will just jump out and repair them all then you can set back down and be on your merry way. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's my self-riding rover system. Again, if you want it, 
uh, please just send me a, fa uh, or a YouTube message. Say, you know, hey, that's a really cool rover. I'd like to have it. Here's my email. I'll shoot it to you in an email, no problemo. So uh, thanks for joining me today, YouTubers, and I uh, hope to see you back in the next episode. We're going to be docking this to an interplanetary system, uh, interplanetary uh, rocket system, and we're going to hopefully take it, to, take it to the moon or to Duna or to somewhere else. So we'll see you next time. Happy space travels.